Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number 12 at the fairgrounds on Saturday, an important Kentucky Derby prep. It's the grade two $1 million Louisiana Derby. We're going a mile and three sixteenths for the Louisiana Derby. Let's take a look at this full field. The number two instant coffee has emerged as arguably the best three-year-old down in New Orleans this winter. Mike, he won the grade two Kentucky Jockey Club last year or two, and he won the Lecompte in solid fashion in his one and only prior start this year. Yeah, more than anything else, he's just actually run pretty well in all four of his starts, Dan. He's had a little break since he won the Lecompte last time. Um, I thought he looked pretty good winning that race. I liked his Kentucky Jockey Club two back as well, where he didn't really have a ton of pace in front of him, but still had the best finish. Um, you know, your call, whether you want to take a short price on him uh, this time as a probably be favored again, uh, but he's the horse to beat. Pace and trip likely going to be important in this Louisiana Derby. Instant Coffee doesn't appear to have a ton of early speed. So we'll take a look at the Timeform U.S. pace projector to see where our friends at Timeform U.S. believe the field will be at the half mile point. And I agree that Kings Barnes, the number six, is going to be forwardly placed. And I feel the same way about the 11 Jace's Road. Those two seem like the horses that would prefer to be prompting the pace. There really are no burners in here, however. Yeah, not a ton of pace. I can I can get behind this pace projector, I guess, with the six and the eleven sort of being up there. You know, I thought maybe the one could uh, Shoppers Revenge could try to use the rail to his advantage. He's got to get out of the gate a little bit better, um, however. But if he breaks, I could see him going. Dan, when I looked at it, the more I looked at it, if I was Brad Cox, Manny Franco's in to ride the nine tap at Conquest, I would tell him to go. Yes, and I believe he does have that sort of speed if necessary. Last time out, he was taken far back, and we'll talk about his trip uh, when we get to him. Let's start with the number one, Shopper's Revenge. And Mike makes a good point about this horse with a little bit of speed. He was a gate-to-wire winner for Steve Asmussen in his first start around two turns. That was two races back. Now, last time out, he did not break well. First start against winners. But let's watch the stretch drive. Shopper's Revenge did get a little bit of pace to run at after that slow break. He swings widest into the stretch. And Mike, it appears everybody's got to look at this. <laughs> they do, but it's Shopper's Revenge who actually makes a run to the lead here down the outside. Dan, unfortunately for him, the winner is going to get through on the inside um, and outkick this horse to the wire. He's clearly second best. I thought he ran fine in this race. Um, after, again, breaking a little bit slowly, he also studied at the start of his career debut. And I thought he ran well that day to, to get up for second sprinting. You know, we'll see if he gets out of the gate this time. I think there's some potential here, Dan. He feels like he's going to be a fair price in this race. I can see him being a factor. 12 to 1 on the morning line for Ricardo Santana and the Hall of Famer Steve Asmussen. A ton of upside potential and a beautiful pedigree, a son of Tappet. The number two is Instant Coffee, and we talked about him in the open. He could be the horse to beat in here. He just seems to show up each and every time. A multiple graded stakes winner. Last time out of the Lecomte, he just sort of settled in the back of the pack, and he inhaled that field. He was best. Yeah, he was. He came with another good finish in that race um, after coming wide to the stretch. And the thing about it, Dan, is I know that the, the setup was there for him, but, you know, it's not like he came from a million out of it uh, to win that race. Saez seemed like he was pretty conscious to, to make sure he stayed within range of the leaders there. He sort of rode him along up the backstretch, and this horse still kicked on very nicely through the stretch. He's got to go longer here. I think this field's probably better than the one that he just beat, uh, but there's just really nothing to knock about him right now. He earned a 92 buyer speed figure in that race, and that number was probably validated when the third place finisher came back to win the Rebel at Oaklawn with a 94 buyer. The number three is Curly Jack, and this horse has some credentials. He's a graded stakes winner around two turns at Churchill Downs. And if you want to make his excuse uh, for his loss last time out in the Risen Star, maybe you can say they were a bit ambitious trying nine furlongs in the first start of the year. Yeah, that's fair enough, Dan. I, I certainly wouldn't argue with that. He got overall, I thought they he got a pretty good trip and ride in that race. They went forward for position. I thought he got a good one in that race. And um, he just really couldn't find much of a finish there. He did his best in that. He got a little tired. Maybe you're right. Maybe coming back going nine furlongs was enough to say, you know, he really needed that one. And it'll improve now. And he does have, you know, two-year-old foundation to build on. He ran some good races last year, including the Kentucky Jockey Club. Instant Coffee beat him that day. Source didn't get a great trip in that race, Danny. He got into some traffic, a uh, deep stretch. 
The number four is Sun Thunder. He finished best of the horses coming out of the Risen Star, finishing ahead of three of the foes he'll face in the Louisiana Derby. And he got a beautiful ride from Brian Hernandez that day. The pace was fast. Hernandez was able to save as much ground as possible, split horses turning into the stretch, and he came with a good solid run to be second best. That trip isn't guaranteed here. Yeah, I think we kind of look at him the same way. I, I won't knock this horse because he's progressed with every start so far for McPeak. And he did run, you know, perfectly fine last time. But man, did he get a perfect trip and ride in that race. He did take advantage, Dan. We'll see if he can do it again. I, I don't think it would be shocking. He's five to one on the morning line. I would never take that price. The number five is Disarm, and I like this horse's career debut last year at Churchill Downs sprinting. Just seemed a little bit green in a live race. The winner would come back to take the Sanford at Saratoga. Then Disarm gave a field of maiden special weights at Saratoga, a beating in his second lifetime outing, and then he missed the remainder of the year. He did come back with this one race at Oakhorn last month, and I think he was compromised by the way the race was run as well as the long layoff. He was wired here in a paceless race, but he is staying on a bit at the end, and I think Steve Asmussen has to be pleased with this off the layoff. I agree. I mean, he got an overall fine trip in this race, saving ground um, behind the front-running winner there, but he just really had no chance with that horse um, walking on the lead and sprinting home. I thought this horse did well to go clear in second at the end. Like you, I liked both of his races as a two-year-old. Not that worried about more distance for him either, Dan. This is a really interesting horse. A really well-bred son of Gun Runner. You're in that big figure at two, expected to move forward in his second start of the form cycle. The six is Kings Barnes going out for Todd Pletcher, a perfect two for two in his career. And you can tell this horse wants distance. He has not sprinted. One was a one-turn mile at Gulfstream Park. And then this race at Tampa Bay. Todd likes to run these horses at Tampa Bay to gain experience. Second time out, a heavy favorite. Kings Barnes settled off the lead, brushed past. He does have the speed to make the lead if necessary he'll be likely in the thick of things when they turn for home yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how much more he can develop he's looked good winning his first two starts he has really good tactical speed he showed it in his debut that one turn mile just sort of sitting in behind the leaders finally got clear he had to wait for room in that race once he got it he won pretty easily he got a, a great trip last time with a long shot just sort of running off on a fast pace up the back stretch but this horse just inhaled him around the second turn and you saw what he did through the stretch. This horse looks pretty good. The seven is Caliostro. And this horse, I think, has a lot of upside potential. He looked good in his second lifetime start off a long layoff. They went two turns with this horse. He was a very comfortable winner at odds on. And last time out, he just missed to Dennington, who's also in this race. He has a little bit more tactical speed than Dennington, however. And he could settle into a decent spot in the second flight or so. Yeah, another one who I'll be interested to see how much more he can improve. When he won off the layoff there, Dan, the first time they stretched him out, he won that race pretty easy. And I still felt like he, he kind of looked like a horse who was still maybe figuring things out a little bit. It, it seemed like he had plenty of room to improve off that win. He did improve last time, but he was only second best to Dennington. Um, I won't be surprised if he runs well again in here, and he might be a fair price. And the number eight is single ruler. We've seen trainer Keith DeZormo pull off some big upsets in derby preps at the fairgrounds in the past. Single ruler is 15 to one on the morning line. David Cohen takes them out. Now, like some of these, he does not have a lot of early speed. He does seem to be improving with each and every start. My one concern is I'm not sure he's the best overall closer in this field. I don't think he is either, Dan. I, and again, I, I sort of feel like this race might be tougher than the, than the Risen Star uh, was last time. Um, We'll see what he does in here. I guess he's going to be a big price, so I don't really want to knock him. He was a big price last time, and they kind of, in my opinion anyway, they rode him like he was a big long shot there. They just sat back, stayed on the rail for as long as they could, and when they took him out in the stretch, I mean, he did well to pick up some pieces, but he never looked like he was winning that race. The number nine is Tappet's Conquest. This is a horse who had an excuse in his seasonal debut. It was a two-life allowance at the fairgrounds, and it was a race that just had zero pace whatsoever, and he was just sort of hung out in the back of the pack and did very well to only lose by a neck. In the Risen Star, he loomed boldly at the 316th pole, and I thought he was going to continue on with his rally and take it. He flattened out just a little bit, but still not bad at all for only his fourth lifetime start. Yeah, I feel the same way about him off his last race. I mean, he ran fine in there. I don't think you would say he had, you know, some kind of huge excuse in that race, but he did make a pretty nice move around the turn, got a little tired at the end. Um, he was also 
you know, raided back for, at the start of that race, but they didn't really feel like they had to do. And that's what they did in his um, seasonal debut, Dad, in that uh, five-horse field. I don't know what they were doing, taking him back to last that day. Um, it wound up costing him at the end. He has enough tactical speed to get a better trip in this race. And if he gets one, I think he can beat this field. Maybe you will get a better price in this race than you did last time. And he showed that tactical speed when winning his first start around two turns at Churchill Downs last fall. The 10 is Dennington. This horse was beaten by instant coffee in the Lecompte. Bounced back with a nice performance in a first-level allowance race. Kenny McPeak gave this horse a little bit of class relief. And Dennington was able to settle sort of near the back of the pack. Came with a strong run. Got the better of Cagliostro. Now it's time to, for him to prove that he's a graded stakes horse. Yeah, exactly. You're going to step him back up here off of a career best performance in that allowance race last time. I thought he ran well in there, Dan. Um, he made a really strong run through the stretch there to get up. And I thought, even though he only got it by a neck, I thought he maybe won that race a little easier than the margin suggests. That was a good performance. Um, we'll see if he is going to be able to do it now when they step him back up in class and the Lasix comes off again, because maybe, you know, ultimately that's what led to the big improvement last time. He's got something to prove here, um, but he's run races that would give him a real chance in this race. The last time jockey Florin Giroux rode the 11 Jace's Road, he got that horse to the lead and the gun runner at the fairgrounds, back down the fraction, sprinted on home, and the colt turned a very respectable 90 buyer speed figure. Last time out in the Southwest, he faced a very promising horse, the now sidelined Arabian Knight. Maybe he's getting a little bit of sneaky class relief from the Southwest. He also caught a wet track that day. I think Giroux's going to be very aggressive from this outside post. I think he's going to try to make Flavian Pratt on King's Barms take a seat i won't be surprised if jace's road is in front going into the back stretch yeah that might be their best option here just to try to come out of there running and see if he can clear the lead this time i mean personally i can't say that i love his gun runner the the win two starts back even though it got a a, a very solid figure and one that makes him competitive in here dan it's just not a race that i love i just thought he took advantage that day um, that being said, the two races that surround it, the two grade threes, are both on sloppy tracks, and he just doesn't seem like he's as good over that kind of going. The 12 is baseline beater, stepping up in class off of a maiden victory, distances his friend. The problem is he just doesn't have a lot of early speed. I'm expecting Corey Lannery to break, drop in towards the rail near the back of the pack, and hope for the best. Corey does love to save ground. This horse does have upside, but he's got to improve in a hurry in a tough group. Yeah, he's got a lot working against him here. You're right. I think they'll just take him back, try to save as much ground as they can, and just see if things work out for them. This is a really good trainer for a horse coming off of a maiden when it's tough spot, though. 100 Kentucky Derby qualifying points to the winner of the $1 million Louisiana Derby. Before we get to our top picks, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. And Mike, you and I look at this race the same way, and I'm hoping we get the 10 to 1 morning line on our top selection, Disarm. I think he got enough out of his seasonal debut. I liked what he saw last year from him at two. He's obviously well-connected and tactical. Yeah, I think we look at him the same way. I think there's a lot of potential here. Maybe he falls into the right kind of trip this time, second off the layoff. And I do think he's going to be a fair price in this race. I wanted to give him a shot in here. Um, I would not be reluctant at all to go back to Tappet's Conquest in this race. I think he is going to run better. Um, we'll see what kind of price he is. I'm on 5'9". Mike's, Mike's going to focus in on the five and nine. And you know, I expect Instant Coffee to run his usual race. I don't necessarily want to take too short a price of him. I think this is going to be the toughest test of his career from a class standpoint. So I'll go with Disarm. Mike's going five, nine, seven, ten, focusing on the top two. I'll go five, two, four, ten. It's the Louisiana Derby. Good luck.